Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the WordPress community and podcast connecting people with the products, lessons, and strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my good buddy and co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? Not too bad. Uh, Matthew Siebert Design right outside of Concord, New Hampshire for uh, <laughs> talking about large nearby cities. Yeah, you know, I don't know why that I just continued to say that but well i think it makes I sense like because i need to represent like, where i'm from but nobody knows where granberry is right so. exactly um yeah so things are going pretty well i mean they're they're slowing down a little bit but uh you know no no, no cause for concern yet but uh yeah yeah nothing uh Never. nothing huge to report your office seems to be slowly becoming decorated. I see there's new art behind you and there's a new rug on the floor. So uh, it looks like things are making progress. Slowly but surely, yeah. I'm actually, I've got like a small table over here that uh, I want to replace with some sort of couch or uh, hallway table. Credenza, I think is the term. I don't know. There's so many different names for things. What? Like a buffet table? Yeah, something. Something to look good. And then uh, a couple more posters are going up there. They're already printed and framed. I just, uh, I need that one piece in the center so I can hang the the, uh, mm. the posters so they look right. Right. But yeah, no, things are, uh, things are coming along. Uh, I think I'm actually going to be adding a bunch of wainscoting to my house uh, in the next couple of weeks because... That's an exciting project. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's not that much work. It's pretty cheap to, uh, to install if you do it yourself and sure. it looks good. So yeah, there you go. Classic yeah. New England charm. Exactly. It would not look good in my house. It no. It would look really weird. <laughs> yeah, you need like an older house to uh, to really get that, that to look yeah. right. To pull that one off, no doubt. All right, well, we're not here to talk home interior decorating. <laughs> this is not this old house. Always. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty much all I know. I'm done with everything I can tell you on home decorating. Uh, but we do have a few topics to discuss. Uh, we're going to continue. Matt's brought a topic. I have a topic. And we have a topic from the group. So today we're going to start off with Matt. So Matt, what is on your mind today? So this has actually been on my mind for uh, about two weeks now. Um, Kyle, if anybody asks him, we'll, we'll let you know that I've been itching to talk about this because I think that I, maybe maybe some of the people in our group has uh, has dealt with this. And if not, I'm sure that uh, these, these emails or these calls will be coming in. Um, so what, what happened to me about a week and a half or so ago was that a client called me out of the blue. Um, there, they've been a, a relatively new client. Um, their site was launched just before the, uh, the whole, uh, COVID thing happened. And this was a, a fairly in-depth lengthy process. Lots of, uh, like back and forth with the client. They were, um, they were picky, but like, you know, understandably so, um, and they they gave me a call, and they were they were a bit nervous, and I don't want to say that they were they they called with like any kind of like accusingly uh, or like or a, like a, an accusing tone, but it was there a little bit, and I totally understand. Um, you know, they just spent a lot of money on a new site that just launched, and they called and they were like, "Hey, what's up? Um, you know, we're we're not getting nearly as many leads as we used to." um, after this new site launched and, you know, it, it was an out of the blue call. So while I was on the phone, I hopped onto Google analytics. I took a look, um, I had installed analytics to their, their old version of the site so that I could track like, you know, the difference and and all of that. Um, but because this was a, a phone call and I was caught a little bit off guard, I didn't have too, too much to say at the time, but after the uh, the call was hung up, and uh, you know, I, I really started to dig into the analytics and, and take a look at things. Um, I saw something that was kind of interesting, and and I wrote the email to him, explaining that about sixty days prior to the uh, the site, like the new site launching, um, they had let's say six hundred people visit the site. This is what they were doing while they were on the site, etc. Um, this is how they were finding the site, you know, all the, the, the typical analytics things that you would, you would relay to a client. Um, but the thing is, is that none of these numbers, uh, decreased, um, post launch, like some of them, some of them did, some of them went up, but, uh, just by like no real margin, like very, very small changes. Um, and I wrote back and I was like, Hey, you know, 
there really hasn't been much change. Like we are actually seeing like, you know, your blogs are, are starting to rank much better. Like this is happening. This is the, you know, and all this, but they're in a, uh, they're in a, a, a building, um, like market. They do like home renovations and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> I think that a big portion of this is that everybody's like, really nervous about the economy not not nearly as many people are doing uh you know spending large amounts of money especially for custom work like people are doing like diy things at home but that's not sure. necessarily the the branch that this particular business is in and i think that it's just an, it's an interesting thing that you know you you launch this new site that's very expensive a client wants to see those results but then something like this happens and those results don't don't immediately hit or you can't really see like these changes happening or the things that they they wanted uh when the the site was launched or when you were first talking about it so relaying that information i think that they they got it they they understood but i can definitely foresee more clients coming out and asking like what's happened to my leads or i just spent this amount of money on a site and i'm not getting any leads anymore is that your fault like well, right. no, but yeah. it sounds like it was pretty poor timing, you know, that uh, timing played a big factor in it. Right. So were, was there a concern like they're not getting as many like submissions through their website or just calls in general? Right. So um, they used to get maybe three to four uh, inquiries through their website a week. And that's almost completely died down. Now they get like maybe one a week, if that. Um, so that was that was the major concern. They're still... I'm not sure what their uh, what their call rate is, but yeah, th- it was mostly just the uh, the site inquiries. Obviously, I'm sure you went and tested that the forms are working and all those kinds of things. Oh, for sure, yeah. And I mean, so the inquiries, like they are coming in. You know, I, I saw those uh, the the few that they're they're getting. But what uh, what really made made things interesting and much much easier to uh, to relay to this client with like you know good news really is that. Yes, you're not getting as many leads, but your your numbers haven't really changed. So people are still interested in your product. People are still uh, looking at your site, um, and that that those numbers haven't really changed. So my guess is that hopefully once things you know start to to stabilize, um, all of these people that had been looking at the site, um, you know, there, it's it's just like a prolonged research phase. So hopefully right. those people. Now that they know about you, they've been on the site. We have seen an increase in return visits, so people are definitely, you know, like tracking them, seeing what's going on. And I think once once they're they're comfortable spending money again, they'll probably see a, a up like a, a pretty good uptick in uh, in those leads. I'm wondering I, a couple of things come to mind. So one is, I mean, there is the possibility. Uh, I'm kind of doubting it based off of what they probably had before and what they have now. But there is the possibility that users aren't finding the contact form or the quote form or whatever it is as easily. So it might be worth at least throwing it at a few people that don't know anything about the site and just have them test it, see if they can get to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause I think sometimes we do get a little blind to um, we know where everything's at. So we think everybody can find it, you know? Uh, and especially when you work in a small agency like ours, where there's just one person, I don't have somebody to just pass it to over here and say, you know, check these things for me. Uh, So not having that person to kind of double check or other opinions or stuff can be, uh, you know, a drawback at time. And the other thing I would, I would at least ask them about is if they were getting three or four uh, leads per week before or submissions through there, how good were those submissions? You know, there's the possibility that you've decreased the number, but improved the quality, right? So if they're getting three or four leads and they were all junk all the time and now they're just not getting those junk leads, well then, I mean, what's the point of getting a submission if it's not any good? That's a that's a very good point. Like, I would like to to know what that uh, like what their close rate is on those calls because I know that they themselves are very picky about the the people that they work with. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that would be a good thing to ask them. Yeah, because I mean that that's part of you know uh, conversion optimization. Obviously, you want the right people contacting you. It's it's no good. You know, if somebody if you had a hundred leads come in today, that wouldn't help you any. You know what I mean? That'd just be stressful. You can't handle a hundred projects, and ninety nine of them would probably be a bad fit and waste your time. You know, so right? Yeah, maybe, and I think especially better optimize the site for the right person. 
Yeah, and I think that's that. That is something that uh, that we 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 spoke about while the uh, the build was going on, um, and like in the planning phases and everything, is that they do they do weed out the vast majority of the uh, the people that they they do uh, like they, they come in as leads because they have a very specific product that has a very specific lead time, and they actually um, on their form it has like you know how soon do you need our product, and it's like you know immediately two to four weeks, et cetera, you know up to a year or so. Um, and if somebody clicks that immediately, that's that's a huge red flag for these people, and they're like, no, we're we're not going to work with anybody that needs it immediately because that's not how it works. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that that could very well be. Yeah, it'd be interesting to find out. I mean, hopefully, I guess you got them talked off the ledge at this point. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they uh, after I sent the email out, they uh, they thanked me, and you know, they were like, "This totally makes sense." You know, we'll we'll see. I'm continuing to track, like, see, you know, if there are those stumbling blocks, like what pages uh, have like a, a big fall off. Um, if that's maybe something that's happening, though, I can tell you that uh, the the new site has probably three times the amount of uh, calls to action. Mm-hmm. Um, mainly just. You know, like they had a product page that literally didn't link anywhere. Now their product pages, all of them have like, you know, order or inquiries or, or something along the right. line. So I, I can't really imagine that it's people not finding the, uh, the contact page, but it, it, it could be, it could be so many different things. And what with everything going on right now, it's a little bit harder to, to pin that down. Yeah. And if I know the job you're talking about, they're, they're, product slash service is uh kind of on the luxury end too isn't it very much so yeah yeah so that that probably makes it even more difficult people might be home and willing to spend you know a little bit of money to fix the the door lock or something that doesn't work anymore but to spend you know invest tons of money it's just probably not a great time so i'm mm-hmm. sure they're just looking for ways that, i mean looking at ways you know why business is hurting them just like everybody else you know yeah exactly and i don't i don't i don't think that this is going to be the last customer or client that uh, that calls me and they're you know they ask like what's happening on the site because numbers have started to drop and what can we do to 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 combat that and with some of my clients like you know i think i think did i speak about this uh, on the last episode the um the country club that um they they weren't able to have their restaurant so we, yeah, we yeah. did the online thing like you know there, there's always something that you can do. It's just a matter of like really sitting down, brainstorming and, and figuring it out. And in most cases, uh, from my experience, hopping on the call with a, uh, with a client and just talking person to person about their business and like where they're, where things are dropping off and just, you know, having that, that brainstorming session with them, like as a, as a team member type of thing, like the results from those conversations are usually pretty dang good. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'll say the the topic uh, I wanted to bring up is kind of, it, I think it fits well with this. So good. We'll get to package this into another uh, awesome, not completely random episode. But, uh, you know, I, I had a customer that um, we launched a site for, we actually launched two websites. I have two businesses that are kind of like sister companies, um, not exactly the same thing, but in the same industry. Uh, both of them were brand new websites. Uh, They didn't have a website before. Uh, Both of them, it was like pulling teeth to get any content. Uh, So one of them, uh, they said, SEO doesn't matter. Uh, Our company stays busy. All of our stuff is like uh, B2B and we already have uh, all these relationships and stuff. We really don't care if we come up in search results. It's just more if we get, you know, an introduction or something, they can see us and they know we're legitimate, right? So that website, I didn't really fret over the lack of content and, Mm -hmm. you know, it being pretty bare. The other one though, they said, you know, this is a newer company and we do want to, you know, go direct to consumer with these services. Um, and we, we want, you know, we want to get found in search results. So I gave them all the options I normally do as far as creating content. Uh, they just wanted to do it themselves and, and hire me to kind of help them edit, Mm -hmm. but it was like pulling teeth the whole time. I mean, uh, you know, I gave them templates and stuff to fill out for some of the the service pages and they would come back with like one sentence of content for the entire page. And so I kept explaining to them, you know, there's not like a magic number, but it's more than one sentence, right? Mm-hmm. So um, people aren't going to get a lot of value out of one sentence. Anyways, we published the website. I don't know. It's been six, seven, eight months ago. Um, and 
you know, I, I, I gave them all the disclaimers I could as far as like, you know, we, we ended up getting a few paragraphs maybe on each page, but the whole website probably has less than less than a thousand words on the whole thing, you know? Um, anyways, she wrote me the other day and just said, uh, Hey, I just wondered if you could send me over some traffic numbers on her website, uh, without me even having to look and she's on a care plan and stuff. So I'm taking care of things and I have mm -hmm. analytics installed, but without even having to look, I could tell you right now that there's nobody visiting that website. You know, the, the industry's fairly competitive. Uh, they don't really have like they're, the geographical area she wants to consider is huge. So she's competing with not only like local places here, but big cities, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I could tell you right off the bat, like nobody's on this website unless, uh, unless you send them there, right? Uh, so I did a quick look through social media. They don't have any pages set up. Uh, they've never wrote anything on a blog or anything like that. Her email signature doesn't have the link to the website in it. Uh, I mean, there's literally no way to find this website unless it's through search. It's and, almost like purposefully hidden at that point. Yeah. So before I, I gave her the numbers, because she asked for them, I'm glad to give them to her. It's not my fault necessarily that there's no traffic on it. I just wrote her back and asked her, you know, uh, what have you been doing to promote the site? And it was just radio silence after that. <laughs> so I let a, I let a couple of days go by and, and, I told her in that, you know, what are you, what are you doing to promote the site email? I told her I'd put together numbers and stuff for her. So I sent her over the numbers and said, Hey, you know, here's what's going on. Um, you know, obviously since you weren't able to put together any content for the website, the SEO stuff's not really working. Um, and it won't until we start getting content on the website. And it doesn't look like you're telling anybody about this, the website at all. She's like, well, we put it on our business cards. Like, you know, cool. <laughs> that's really not going to be enough to, to make your website effective. I think there's, I think there's a misconception that, you know, if like, if you build a website, people will just come to it. And that was probably more realistic several years ago than it is today. Mm -hmm. But I know Doug had posted in, uh, in the group over the weekend, frustrated that, um, he was going to start sending all his clients a copy of they ask you answer uh to try to get them to realize how important copy is and all that um and it, i mean it is and it's just frustrating that that customers don't understand just building the website isn't enough like you have to do marketing too right you know it's funny um that that kind of mirrors a, a project that I'm working on right now that's it's an incredibly incredibly niche uh like service they do um, like quantum computer things that are far above my knowledge. Uh, funny enough, they actually sent like uh, the next round of edits, which I'll be working on after this show that uh, it was, I need to call them because I don't know what they're referring to. Like <laughs> I can't even pronounce the, uh, the, the, the products that they're, they're talking about. But when, uh, when they signed on, you know, SEO was not an issue for them because they go to trade shows. They, they basically just need some sort of a brochure site that, you know, it, it, it looks professional and it, uh, it, it instills trust. Like that's literally the only thing that they need because people aren't going to be ser like searching Google for this product. Um, halfway through though, uh, now they're saying, Hey, we need SEO. And like how many people are going to be seeing the site and this and that and the other thing. So I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what direction I'm going to go with, uh, with, the, with these guys right now, but like, it's, it's kind of funny in that even the clients that say, Oh, SEO doesn't matter. It, right. it really does. Like, I think, I think like just basic SEO should probably be considered in every, every project. But when, when you're talking about a client like yours, where it's like pulling teeth trying to get content like that's that's a tough situation you know because right. and, and i've it once once seo hive came around i pitched them that idea and said hey you know i know you struggled with content i have a service now where i'll do all the content creation for you yada 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 mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't like the price obviously you know so um, right they're they're not in any position to spend more money on it now, especially now that they think it's not doing anything. So it's, you know, I think it's bad fit client. Honestly, you know, they just they're they're too they're too small and don't have enough money. For and yet their they, they're 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 looking for the world, right? Right. 
Yeah, that's that's a tough situation to be in. I've definitely been there myself. I'm probably on the uh, the precipice of of being there with this new client as well. But um, I think I think it's definitely like an uh, a client by client basis, and like or at least like that that uh, that type of personality that you're dealing with because there's it's the same problem, but many different people uh, like you know bring that to you, and I think that just kind of playing into their personality helps a lot with that type of thing, like how you, you react to their, uh, their inquiry about that SEO. Yeah. And I've, I've been trying to like really harp on these things in the beginning of, of the process, like during discovery and stuff before we're ever writing a proposal or anything, but trying to at least lay some groundwork for education on how all this stuff works. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think education is so important, especially with people that just don't understand how any of this stuff works. But, you know, what I've tried to what I've tried to kind of configure is, you know, if you're just hiring me to build a website, I'm going to lay all the foundation things for SEO. Like, you know, the the site's going to be structured properly and these kinds of things. You'll have the alt um, tags and like the simple stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but SEO, I just keep harping on. It. That's like an ongoing service. It's a marketing, you know, endeavor you have to take on in the long run. It's not, can I turn SEO on or off? You know, it's not a binary decision. So. Mm -hmm. Like speaking of process and everything, one of, one of the things that you do that, uh, that I'm in the process of redoing my, uh, my site and it's, it's a huge undertaking because I'm trying to add like 10 years worth of ideas. I haven't changed my site in far too long, but, um, I think like one of the things that I really like that you do is you ask, um, you ask like over overarching questions uh during your uh your onboarding questionnaire where it's yeah. like how important is your you know mm -hmm. your site being found on google you know nice to have not important and i forget exactly what your what your answers yeah, it's are. like it's like not important nice to have or critical exactly and i think that having that like that sets up that that first uh that first conversation and then when somebody does say seo not important um, or even nice to have, but not necessarily critical. I think that right. that's, that's the point in which when you, when you talk to them, you, you really make sure that they understand saying no to SEO and what that does or like what right. the, the far reaching consequences can be. Yeah. And it's, it's just a hard thing to explain to people. And you kind of sound like you're selling voodoo in a bottle or something, you know, cause it's like, well, what do you do for SEO? Well, you do lots of things and how quick does it work? Well, it depends. And you know what I mean? It just, you sound right. And, and the point, you know, like you're probably talking to a client that's hired a web developer in the past and have been burned. So, yeah. I mean, how many of your clients have been burned by, by previous graphic designers or previous, uh, like, you know, SEO agencies Creatives. or, or any, anything to do with like our industry, like there's, you're almost when you're, when you're talking to a client for the first time, you're almost like trying to dig out from under what the previous person did to them. And yeah. so when you pull in that, like, oh, it can take, you know, uh, a couple of months to a year or, you know, we're going to do this or that, or maybe both like, yeah, it's, it's really hard to, to convey that and like, uh, and, and build that trust. Yeah. Education, education, education and process. Yes. And process. All right. Absolutely. So let's, uh, let's discuss one of these posts in the group from this week. This happened on June 26 and I've actually marked it as an announcement. It was on Friday afternoon, three o'clock my time. So it was late in the day on Friday. Uh, I know a lot of people probably would have missed it. Uh, UK was already, um, drunk by then it was Friday <laughs> evening. Um, anyways, uh, somebody new in the group who I haven't been able to make contact with, um, they posted in the in the group they said if you could give someone like me who's just about to launch their web design company two pieces of advice what would it be i thought this was a really good question because of the, sp the being specific two pieces of advice if you mm -hmm. just said advice i don't think it would have been as good anyways uh it's had 85 comments already and there is tons of gold in this post people just uh you know really showing the mistakes they made and what they would do differently or just, you know, the things that have been best for them. And I think uh, what's been neat about it is most of the people that are contributing to this post are also reading through it. So there's not a lot of duplicate answers. There's a lot of people saying, well, everything I would have said has already been said, but here's a couple more. Right. You know, so 85 comments and, you know, two pieces of advice per comment. Uh, you know, there's nearly 200, uh, 
good pieces of advice in this thread. So it's definitely worth uh, checking out, but I thought we'd go through a couple of these here and, and do some reaction. Yeah, absolutely. Are you looking at it right now? Because I am not. Yes, I do have it pulled up right now. So I'll, I'll be in the driver's seat for this. So I said, um, monthly recurring revenue, mm -hmm. like have a plan for that immediately. And that has to be one of the most important things because I think this business is just really way too hard and stressful without it. Um, it's and the other thing I put without in, it. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I put in here is to just be unapologetically you. And I think, uh, when I first started this, like I wanted to sound like I was a big agency or that I had been doing this for a hundred years and using we's instead like, of eyes or yeah, yeah, yeah. once yeah. I could kind of let go of all those things and just be me, not only did I do, I think people respond better to it, but like, I'm just so much more comfortable talking about my business because I don't have to make shit up about it, you know? Yeah. And I mean, the people that are reading that and they're, you know, that, that content that's unapologetically you that they're resonating with, then chances are you're going to get along with that client much better than somebody else. So sure. you're probably attracting clients that you want to work with much more as well. And, you know, with, with everything today, um, being like digital or like, you know, work from home or, or everything like that, it doesn't really necessarily matter that it's a, a one man band or if it's an agency of 50, like it, it, you can do great work so long as you don't stress yourself, you know, like sure. take on far too many projects or something. <laughs> but, you know, if, if you know your limits and you're good at what you do, then there really shouldn't be on the, uh, the client side of things, at least like any worry about hiring one person versus a team. Right. And I mean, it depends on the project too. Obviously Nike's probably not going to hire me, but, uh, you know, for the types of businesses I work with, yeah. uh, you had added, um, be clear with your processes and have a easily understood contract. So plug for monster contracts. If you want to go to the admin bar.com forward slash contract, you can pick up a very legitimate contract. That's easy to read, but, uh, yeah, contracts are are super important. Exactly. And I think one of the things that I, uh, I mentioned during that is that contracts are, are, you know, it's not set it and forget it type of thing. It's always growing. It's always changing. Anytime something happens, uh, to me or about me or whatever, you know, something, something during the, uh, the course of a project that happens and I'm like, Oh man, I don't want that to happen again. That goes into the contract. It's like, it's a living, breathing thing that, you know, it's, it protects you. And I think that that one of the reasons why I like my contract is that it's simple to, uh, to understand. It's simple to read. It doesn't use like huge words and it doesn't try to sound super fancy, albeit, you know, it is legally binding. Um, the client gets it. And I, I try to put in a good amount of, of content in there that, that, protects them as well. And I think that because it's easy to read and because it's like, here are the things that I'm responsible for. Here are the things that you are, you know, it's, it's almost, it's a contract that benefits both of us. And I think that right. that's, that's a huge thing with, with people too, because it's, it's a little bit easier to sign something when you know that the person that that's on the other side of that, like, is trying to be as genuine and, right. you know, helpful as And they possible. have to live up to it as well. Exactly. Yeah, Stephanie had replied to your comment and said it was literally years before I no longer updated my contract after every single project. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, mine, I still, every once in a great while, will add something, but I think it probably took me about three to four years to, to get everything that's in my con uh, contract now. A lot of people on here just saying blanket charge more, which, I mean, yeah, I guess when you start out, you probably charge too little, but... I don't know. I've always felt bad. I've, I've always had like a, there's just a bad taste in my mouth when somebody just says raise your prices as a blanket statement. But uh, that's in here several times. Learn to sell. That's super important. Mm -hmm. um, Shane Riley had mentioned having a separate bank account for your business, which I think has been huge for me. Absolutely. Uh, just making, uh, bookkeeping so much easier. Actually, adding to the uh, to the second bank account, um, I mean, all businesses should have a, a separated bank account. Um, I actually have two. Um, one is for profits and, and all of that, and the other one is for taxes. So when I'm looking at my numbers, the one that's, that has to do with taxes, it's 33% of all of my projects go in there. Um, I don't have that connected to any of that, like the, the money tracking or like, you know, any, any app or anything like that. So when I'm looking at my numbers, like I'm looking at 
my numbers and when tax season or quarterlies or whatever like come around it doesn't hurt to to spend that money because as soon as i get it it goes into this basically invisible account and it's taken care of i i don't have to worry about it but i also don't have to see it go away if that makes sense yeah for sure um i i stick mine in account it I don't have to do accounting on it, but yeah, I, I kind of do the same thing where taxes just go away and don't get touched. I have some other savings that goes in there that just doesn't get touched as well. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that was kind of a recurring thing was to document uh, your workflows, your procedures and all that kind of stuff. And that's, that's something that's really hard to do when you're first starting out because you're kind of making it up as you go every time. Right. Uh, but at some point you'll start to realize, and this is really for, I think the, the question was somebody just starting out, um, you know, you'll realize over time the things that you're doing over and over and over. And I can't tell you how, how helpful it's been for me to make spreadsheets with checklists or I have Trello cards that are saved with checklists in them that I can just go through and kind of follow my steps all the way through. Um, and eventually that's grown into kind of how, how I'm going to start the project, how I'm going to do everything. And it becomes like a habit. Or, tons of the emails I, I have to send clients every time requesting content or getting them to do this or do that. Um, and once you start to really document those things, man, projects move so much quicker and you're so much less likely to forget something. And when a client asks you about something, you can, you have all of that information in, in your head because it has become a habit. So when somebody's like, okay, when we get to this point, what happens? You don't have to stumble. You can just say, this is exactly what happens. And, yeah, and, and I've, I've started publishing a lot more about my processes just on the front end of my website, because mm -hmm. I think that's something that people coming to you probably want to know about, but aren't asking, you know, like they're, they're probably curious as to how is all of this going to work, you know? Uh, so I think kind of painting that picture for them, uh, before it ever happens, before you ever make contact with them is probably helpful too. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Justin said, no one's going to knock at your door. Be prepared for lots of networking meetings. I definitely did a lot of that starting out. Um, there's tons of web developers out there. So if you just throw up a site and never talk to anybody, you're probably not going to get many leads. So mm -hmm. uh, um, Trish said, make mistakes. It's the only way to learn. And number two, never stop learning. I would have to agree with that. Yep. Never, never stop making mistakes, I guess. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Which I'm excellent at. I'm really excelling in that area. So that's awesome. But we'll, uh, we'll put a link to that thread here, uh, here in the show notes and y'all can go add to it if you didn't catch this one. Um, but look through, there's lots of, lots of good advice in there from people, you know, people who have just started doing this a few months ago, all the way to people who've been doing this for years and years and years. And, you know, it's one cool thing about the group is, uh, you know, everybody kind of has something to give either, e even if you've just started out, um, you know, there's people that are behind you in the process and people that are ahead of you in the process, pretty much no matter where you're at, unless you're the, the one at the very bottom, just starting out or the one person who's been doing this the longest, right? Right. Otherwise we're all somewhere in the spectrum. So out of, you know, 2,700 people, there's two people at any given time that, that don't have someone ahead or behind them. And the thing um, is, is we, that like, you know, really don't at all feel like embarrassed or like, don't think that you can't ask a question. I mean, definitely search the group first, see if it's been discussed, but there's been plenty of times when somebody who is just starting out posts a, a, a quote unquote embarrassing question or like a stupid question um, that people will respond and people like, I've read these questions like, oh, I know the answer to this, but I'll read the comments and, and, and learn something completely new or a different way to do something than, than I've been doing. And turns out it's way better or way easier or right. so, yeah, there's no dumb questions. There's, there's only, only good ones. Only dumb people. And we got some of those too. Of only. course. <laughs> but we do have some of those, especially the ones stealing our things, but we won't get into that. Mm -hmm. I think I've, my blood pressure has come down and I'm not so mad about that anymore, but, um, okay. Yeah. So that's it. That's, uh, that's all I got today. You got anything to add to this, Matt? No, no. I'm, uh, I'm ready and rearing to get this published and, and get to work. Nice. All right. Well, uh, everybody can go check out that we mentioned the group like five times. If you're not in the group, you can go to the admin bar.com forward slash group or click one of the 5 million buttons on our websites that take you to our group. Uh, if this group or podcast or community or we help you out in any way, the easiest way to help us is to share our content, like, and subscribe to our channels and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes a little time and it greatly helps support the show. We'll catch you guys on the next one.